We've got asthma problems. Oh, like bad right oh, now. No. I, I had it and I taken it to the emergency room Saturday night because his heart was racing and he couldn't breathe. And they gave him steroids and he laid around Sunday and he started feeling better yesterday, uh, Monday. And I took him to the doctor for a follow up on Tuesday and the doctor said that like he could, his lungs could take a turn for the worst at like any minute. Um, so he's wheezing, but he's got a lot of, it sounds like a lot of congestion and junk in there. And so, um, I mean, I put the two and two together, like borderline pneumonia. So um, he's on two different inhalers and saline nebulizer and some other medicine. So. Has he had this problem before? This bad or? He has asthma every now and then, like seasonal changes, and um, sometimes it'll flare. Like it flared up when he played in the leaves a few weeks ago, but not this bad. Yeah. So. And uh, it's great. Those steroids are just. <laughs> <laughs> I took a video of him. He's just spinning around in circles in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> really? You saw it in here? I mean, the stars is coming out of Oh my god. <laughs> no, it's the stars on steroids, literally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get my scared. Me too. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's surrounded by sisters, and it's tough, too. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he went outside, yeah. and then he made have been barefoot outside. Um, and Trey got home from work and he made him come inside and that boy just cried and cried and cried. Oh, he was like, I don't want to come inside. Good evening. Yes. Oh, I'm not on? I'm sorry. Just pray for him. That he'll get better. Tina, how's Ken? Ken is um, in a regular room. It's on now. Okay. He's in a regular room. He um, he talks. He's clearer today, and he talks about things that make sense, but they don't make sense in what the conversation we're having right then. So um, he's on, his blood counts are coming down, but they started him on an antibiotic on Sunday. They have no idea where the infection is. And uh, the blood, uh, the spinal tap they did, they can't tell anything either. So um, they'll, they'll be wanting him gone in a few days because there's nothing else that they can do right now. And he does need to be in rehab. So just pray that he'll be where they can help him the most. There's a there's some spots in Waitsboro that would be closer to Rebecca, which would be nice. Um, but just if you please pray for that. All right. And for those of you that have heard, uh, uh, Kimberly uh, Henson's father is what's well, real serious, but uh, you probably very close to the point of not making it last night. But uh, uh, got the prayer list going and. Uh, he had a complete turnaround today. So, uh, Amen. At least the last word. Uh, he seems to be, uh, all the numbers are moving in the right direction. Let's put it that way. All right. Anyone else? Yes. My nephew, David Wiggins. He was having a serious problem with his kidneys. Um, he gained like a bunch of weight just real quick. He went to the urgent care and... Um, Overnight, they bring like 22 pounds off of him. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And they sent him to a urologist, and he do not really know what the answer is yet. Wow. How old is he? He just turned 60. Okay. Somebody else had their hand. Yes. Um, Janice Brown. Janice? Yes, Janet. Oh, Janet. Brown. She's. My aunt's best friend down to that, like Murray, and she lost her husband very suddenly um, last week. The funeral was Monday, and her son and daughter lived and walked into the house. 
for the rest of him that he's come in is all left yesterday, um, left yesterday. So it's just the kind of settle it setting in is been quite a piece before now. Just room for him first. Yes. I think I may have put this boy's name on the, the list of three or four years ago. He's about 35. He's a, 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 one of my good friends, her oldest son. He was in a climbing accident about four years ago and fell several hundred feet, then onto a ledge, and then rolled off and fell another good many feet. He, he eats right, he really helps conscious, but he's got PTSD from all this, and he's back at home, he can't handle being around one or two people, it's just about it. And he's a good guy, and he loves the Lord, but he, does, he won't go to church. He don't want to be around people. He has a really difficult time working. But the PTSD, I had lunch with his mother today, and you know a mother's heart. You know how you are about your kids. And he's he's just pitiful. And what's his name? His name's Sam. I feel like I need to get his last name. But I don't think Susan would care. His last name's McGinnis. Just want to step out there. M C I N N I S. Oh. Yes. I remember that accident. Yeah. But it's, I mean, he, he's healed from the physical injuries, which is big, but he's got that PTSD, and it, it's just, it's, it's hard to be a, with him. Yeah, I don't know. He, he knows he, he knows he has an issue, mm -hmm. a problem. But I don't know. Susan needs to help, and he certainly does. Most most of friends. But Susan, bless her heart, she, his mother, she's had a really hard time. She, Sam was the oldest of three boys, and um, um, I won't tell reasons, but she and her husband divorced. And which he has now apologized. But the poor woman, she she put these three kids through school on her own money. And um, last year, the middle son he had got hurt in a mo what a moped accident, and then he had some issues with with that. He had an accident again. And he was accidentally choked, and he died. Mm -hmm. So of course, she's suffering from that. And the youngest boy, he was in drugs no longer, but Susan has custody of his son, which she's raping. It. And I mean, the poor girl has her plate full. So he's afraid for Susan to lose him. Anyone else? Very young as Anne. The family was called in this afternoon. Uh, they, she's under hospice care, but they said they didn't think she would make it through the night. This would be the first person, really, that Tanya has lost that was close to her. And so, pray for that family. Okay. That's Don's sister. sister. What's, what's her name? Shirley Bradley.
need one. And she just had returned from maternity leave. She has a four-month-old baby. Oh, goodness. Did you say Goodman? Goodman. Good, Goodman. Good, Goodman. Good week. She has a four-month-old baby. I think they said she's been back to work two or three days. And she has a one-year-old and a three-year-old. And she's with Charlotte. CFPD, yes, Charlotte. Her husband's with the fire department. Her husband works with the fire like blocking traffic or helping work to invest that other wreck investigation and then these up two other <coughs> tractor trailers collided with each other. Mm -hmm. But she wasn't shot or something. No, no, she was if they were investigating a wreck. Um, said there were four other officers injured and sent to the hospital but they all were released today. They, they had the station closed and a tractor trailer just kind of mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well I I heard there were two Tractor trailers that collided and crashed into them. Maybe I misunderstood. That's what I heard. The there were, there were already investigating the tractor trailer truck, <laughs> and then there were two more that collided and kind of collided into them. That's what I understood. But I, I don't know the, the, how exactly it happened. But uh, yes, you had your. My mom has had some problems with. Um, it appears she had some heart failure. Um, but she, her name is Judy Cooper. But she has, uh, she called the doctor yesterday. She's not been feeling good for, for a couple of weeks. Um, and anyway, she, her legs are very, very swollen. And um, she called the doctor, and the doctor basically told her there wasn't anything they could do after Christmas. Oh, um, my. They told her even if she went to the hospital, they couldn't put her in patient because her heart, heart is so full that they wouldn't have her brain. Wow. So, um, and that's your mom? Okay. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Anyone else? She's got a few new ones up here. There was a wreck on uh, uh, Olive Branch uh, 10, 10 o'clock this morning, truck turned over, mm -hmm. laid on the side in the road. But I, I just went around. It was right there, right where, uh, is that farm wood that cuts off there near the farm pond? Uh, farm pond? Yeah. And it and goes all the way around. So I went the other way because yeah, they were blocking everything. Mm -hmm. so. Anyone else? A lot of people with their first Christmas without somebody. Like, and a lot of younger people, like people, maybe it's because I'm getting older. I don't know. Most <laughs> people my age. Real young people, right? That's right. I'm 22. <laughs> yeah. Pastor out of Silo Presbyterian Church died. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, COVID? Or, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Silo Presbyterian Church. Yeah. 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 South of Presbyterian, is that on 84? Yeah. Uh, Wesley Chapel, every time they're on their own right to the one for sure. All right, uh, Rodney, you're going to come lead us? Miss Sydney's going to play.
I will close it tonight. We've got several turns on. Father, we count it all joy, Lord, to be able to come to your house again and pray to Father to praise and worship you, Father God, and bring his petitions to you directly. Thank you for your son Jesus Christ and that cross, Father God, that the precious price was paid on our behalf. I would just uh, thank you and praise you for Kimberly and his father, Father God. It seems like it's, uh, he's turning around and headed in the right direction and uh, Oh, we just praise you and thank you, Lord, for answered prayer in that, that avenue, Lord. Oh, we just thank you for the freedoms that we do have here in the United States, Amen. Lord, because tonight, Father, such a precious price was paid on a lot of men and women's behalf, Father, that we can still have these freedoms. And Lord, we just ask that you just put your hedge of protection around them, Father. We just pray for the family of the young lady, Lord, that was killed today. Father God, uh, the officer, Father God, the, with a young baby, Father, I just pray, God, that you would just, Holy Spirit, just minister as only you can, Father, God. That's just such a tough situation, Lord. Everyone involved there, Lord, it just seems, shows how precious life is going in this. Uh, Lord, we just uh, also pray for Jedediah, Father, God. I just pray, God, that you touch and heal him lungs, Father, God, that your hands and healing be upon him now, Lord, that he can recover from this quickly, Father, God. Yes. Uh, get back to normal and then. Have a good Christmas, Father. Father, pray for our brother Ken, Lord, as he's he moved into a regular room. And Lord, we just ask that you open the doors for a rehab, Father. Yes. That would be close, Lord, that his wife would be able to get there easily, Father God. Thank you. And Lord, we just ask for the best help that can be possibly given to him, Father, that he can recover quickly. Mm-hmm. We just thank you, Lord, for the way he's uh, been a minister for you, Father God, all these years. And yes. Lord, we know he loves you, Father. I know you love him, so Father, just ask, Lord, you. Just your blessings upon him, Father yes. God. Lord, we just uh, pray for David Wiggins tonight also, Father, Lord, he needs uh, help uh, with these fluids of his body, Father God. Just ask, Lord, that uh, the doctors will be able to see what's going on. And, uh, Lord, uh, if you don't choose to heal him uh, directly, Father, that you give them the wisdom and the discernment, Father, that uh, they can they can help him, Father yes. God. He can recover from this, Father. And, uh, Lord, just, there's so many up there, Father God. I was, just ask, Lord, you know there's, there's concerns in each and every family, even the ones, even ours, as we sit here tonight, Father. We all have something going on, Lord, in our families and uh, or people that we know, Lord. And nothing's caught you by surprise, Father, but we just want the best for each and every one, Lord. And well, we know that you love them, Father, but we also ask, Father, that uh, you just just work your way in them, Lord, to draw, to draw them closer to you, Father. Lord, they may... Uh, just lean on you heavily, have, heavenly, I have a heavenly, Father God. Just lean against you, Father, as hard as possible, Father. And Lord, just put their trust and faith in you, Lord, for those uh, that we have that we know that are lost and dying about you, Father. We ask that you intervene. I would bring salvation to them, Lord. Lord, this time, uh, this season, Father God, of Christmas, as we celebrate your birth, it gives, it seems like people are more a little more open. To, to listen and, and to uh, receive what uh, they, they might not usually follow during the regular time of the year. And Lord, I ask that we take that opportunity, Father. I ask that we would uh, it's, um, just reach out to the lost, Father God, to be uh, sharing your word boldly, Father God, through love, Lord, and uh, let your Holy Spirit work in their lives, Father. I do pray for our country, Father God. I pray for our leaders. Pray, Father God, that you would draw them close to you, that they would be on their knees seeking your ways, not man's ways, Father God. I want to pray for revival to break out through our country, Father, that we may be a godly country once again, Lord. Just pray that your will be done, Lord. Help us to uh, see what's going on around us, Father, knowing that you've placed us at this point and place and time, Father God, to serve you, and Lord, that's what we need to be doing, Father. Father, I must Father, thank you again for your Son, Jesus Christ, and the cross, Lord, and the salvation that you brought to us, Father. Right now, I just pray these things in Jesus' name.
we do pray for him. And Father, we come to you praising you and thanking you for this time when we remember the birth of the Lord Jesus, your great gift to us. She sent to be born, to die, to die for us. We can have this privilege to come and speak to you. We praise you, Father, and thank you. Lord, you are the mighty God. There's nothing that's beyond you. There's nothing that's hard for you. There's nothing that confounds you. So, Father, we come and we lay these, these requests in your your hands, knowing that you hear everyone and you answer. Father, we pray for Janet Brown, the loss of her husband. Pam Brooks, the loss of her husband. Lord, we pray for Martha's mom. She's sustainer and healer. She lift her up. We pray for Sam Dennis. I want to pray you deliver him from this awful situation in his life for his mother, which you strengthen her. Lord, so many here that we care about, know about, our hearts hurt for We thank you that we are, we do hear good things, and we can expect good things from we pray you open our hearts to hear you tonight. She draws close and speak to us. We ask in Jesus' name. Father, you've heard the names of these listed and those lifted up in prayer. Lord, we're thankful for, for the concerns of others that they would realize that prayer is many times the only solution to a situation. So, Lord, we're thankful that we've been able to give them the privilege of being able to, uh, to pray for others. Um, Lord, I know that uh, uh, some have uh, passed away. We've lost uh, a police officer and that's something that will be with that family for uh, until those uh, those uh, pass away years from now and that little baby. Uh, Lord, others that uh, are still on uh, precipice of, uh, of life and death, uh, pray for Kimberly's dad, uh, pray for uh, a couple other situations, pray for Martha's mom. And she's uh, said that the doctor said the no reason to come now until after Christmas. And Lord, it's just a we live in a crazy world, but no matter what takes place in the world, Father, we realize that ultimately every single second, every single tick of the clock is in your control. And so, Father, we have to depend upon you whether we realize it or not. We pray for uh, David Wiggins. We pray for uh, uh, Jedediah. The Lord, to just lift him up. Uh, pray for uh, uh, Miss Helen's uh, friend, uh, Judy. The Lord, just pray for that need that's there. Pray for, uh, I can't remember all the names, Sam and Susan, and, and uh, just uh, seems like she's got a very uh, uh, difficult uh, life ahead of her with the, with the boys. Lord, I just pray for each of them and the needs that are there. Uh, Father, we also pray for those that are not able to be with us tonight. Uh, we've got several that uh, still have been exposed to COVID, haven't come down with COVID, and some that have it, but it's not very serious, so we're thankful for them. Lord, I'm thankful that my, my son and his wife and girls are, are uh, out of their quarantine, doing better. And so, Lord, we're just thankful for uh, your blessings upon that situation. And Father, even though we, we lose loved ones, uh, especially uh, those that have lost loved ones in this past year or just recently, uh, Father, if we have that faith in you and we, have, uh, we know that their faith was in you, Lord, it's something that we can just uh, accept because uh, it's not, uh, even though we might miss them, it's not the end mm -hmm. because we know that uh, there is eternity and that uh, you prepared a home for us. 
Father, your word is so amazing. Every time there's a need, you have a solution, and you also comfort those that are going through difficult times. And Lord, we're just thankful that your word is there for that comfort. As you said, you would uh, willingly have taken in the, uh, like a hen takes in our little biddies and protect them, Lord. We know that you are just right there watching over us. Lilies of the field, you watch them as they grow, the birds of the air. Father, we have nothing to fear because we know that you are in control. I'm thankful for each person that's here tonight, for our church, those that are able to be there on Sundays and Sunday mornings, Sunday nights. And Lord, we uh, know that Christmas is here, and so there's a lot of people going different directions now. But Lord, we pray for safety and your guiding hand upon each of their lives and bring us back together as we might celebrate again this coming Sunday morning. Not just uh, the day after Christmas, but that we might celebrate every single day, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We can rejoice when we're able to come into your house. Father, we thank you again for what Jesus did. Not just uh, what he did at Calvary, but that other end of that miracle there. As you became a human being, Father, that still, the more I studied, the more I realized just what you did by by stepping down from your throne room and willingly taking on the, the form of a, a man, Lord, it's just it's just amazing. And then willingly going to the cross is even more so. Thank you for our kids that are here tonight. We've got three or four that uh, usually would be in a water program, but they're here tonight. So probably we pray we might share a few things that would be helpful to them as they uh, uh, not only just begin their Christian walk, but also as they become fearless warriors for your uh, your kingdom. We give you the praise, honor, and glory for it all. In Jesus Christ, in name we pray. Amen. All right, if you'll take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 1. We're not looking at the genealogy tonight, but we're all going to look at this one verse that uh, um, is the the last of the genealogy here in this particular passage. Uh, look at verse 16, I believe it is. So Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Uh, not with the genealogy part, but with the term Jesus. Um, most of us are, are familiar at least a little bit with different Hebrew terms. But this is a very, very unique name, the name of Jesus. Uh, and in the Hebrew form, it's here, Yeshua. I have been in about 11 or 12 different countries. I haven't been around a whole lot of people that were in other countries that cursed, but I have read enough to know that most people don't go around hitting their thumbs in China and say, oh, Buddha, or something like that. Uh, even in foreign countries that know very little about the Bible, they have learned that the name of Jesus is more of a curse word than it is a word of calling on the deity of the creator of, of the universe. And especially here in English speaking, but also in many other countries, um, using the name of Jesus has become almost... Um, uh, a slip of the tongue, people don't even think about using Jesus' name in a profane way. Uh, so it's interesting that the creator of the universe stands separate from all of the other false gods that are out there, all the other false uh, uh, religious leaders that have uh, uh, adopted religions around their life, uh, Buddha, Muhammad, all of these. Uh, but it's also interesting, especially in the Jewish world. In the Jewish world, there's a couple of names. Uh, here it says, uh, uh, it says, and Jacob, verse 18, um, 16, rather, and Jacob begat Joseph and Mary, or the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Uh, the word Christ, um, and I hope that you know this is how important it is but in the Hebrew it's Messiah and it's so important that even the Jews 
refused, or I should say, not all Jews, uh, many Jews that are of orthodox blend, and they would be holding to the Old Testament. They do not accept Jesus, Yeshua, as uh, um, even as Jewish. They believe he went off and started another religion. And if you today join or accept Jesus as the Messiah or the Jewish Messiah, you are separated from the family and are no longer considered to be Jewish in the Orthodox Jewish realm because they believe only those that abide by the Jewish customs, traditions, and rules and laws that they have established their traditions down through the years, then you can be counted as Jewish. So if you accept Jesus Christ, the Messiah, or Yahshua HaMashiach, if you accept him, then you are separated from the Jewish uh, family, and you cannot uh, participate in their activities. Uh, this word here is also another unique word. It's another name, and sometimes Yahshua can be spelled like this. Actually, this translation is directly translated, if you were to do it from the Jewish, uh, Jewish uh, perspective, is the term Joshua. So Joshua and the name Jesus, even though he, Jesus is in English, um, uh, Joshua and Jesus are related in that it has to do with the definition. The word means some derivative of save. It could be salvation. It could even be the term save us. Uh, it could even be the term salvation or all of those depending on how it's used in a sentence. The context is very important. But Joshua and Jesus are both important. In fact, in the scriptures, it says that uh, uh, Jesus shall be called Jesus uh, because uh, he shall save his people from their sins. Um, and that's an important aspect of, of what Jesus came to do. Uh, here is another word. You'll notice that it's very similar to uh, uh, Jesus, but it leaps off the A. And I just wanted to speak to a moment for this word. This word is a Hebrew word, but it has an entirely different meaning than Yeshua. Actually, this is a derogatory term used by Orthodox Jews. Orthodox Jews so despise the name of Jesus that when they're writing the name Jesus or Yahshua, when they're writing that in their uh, books or whatever they may make some mention of, that this is the term they will use. And it leaves off the A, and you think, well, it's just a little bit different. It just might mean a slightly different, but actually it means a whole lot different. What it means is this. Understanding 
that nothing in the Old Testament that has to do with the coming of the Messiah can be mentioned in the same breath that the name of Jesus is mentioned. But the same name that Jesus is mentioned by is for salvation, and they understand that the Messiah is coming for salvation. So they hate the name of Jesus in the term that we use it in. But here in Matthew, the very first it jumps out at us. The whole purpose of Matthew here in chapter 1 is talking. He gives us a list of their genealogy. He says, of whom was born Jesus, who is the Christ. And so that's the important part of what Christmas is. It has to do with making what Jesus stands out in the world. His birth is so different from everything else in the Bible and everything else in all of history that his birth stands as the center of uh, our, at least our calendars, our clocks or whatever, from AD to, to uh, from BC to AD. But they are constantly trying to erase the memory of Jesus. Uh, or, uh, in fact, if you talk to a Jew and say, um, there, if you read Isaiah 53 and say, well, you know, talks about being pierced and um, that they call out his name, they pluck the hairs from his beard, and, uh, you know, and, uh, they mock him. Uh, many, you ask them, what, what does that make you think of? Many of them will, will say, they won't say Yahshua, Yasha. They'll say that in the term of, well, that's who it makes it, but they don't want to say the name. Yeah, I, I, uh, some of you may have read or heard about the uh, who's Harry Potter. They had the bad guy in there. He's the name that shall not be mentioned. And that's the way it is with the Jewish people. They hate the name of Jesus so much that they will not even use it. In fact, when I was, one time we were at the wall, uh, I think it was before I went with this church, but uh, the guy wanted us to come down. Maybe a man, I can't remember who it was, uh, was with us down there. I don't remember. But we walked up and the, uh, the guy was standing there at the entrance to the western wall. And, uh, of course, he was there to guard the entrance, make sure that you had, even if you were Gentile, you could go, but you had to wear a little uh, yarmulke, the hat on it. But when he started talking about Jesus, he wouldn't use the name of Jesus. He says, he called him your guy, your guy. And uh, he says, uh, no, we don't believe in your guy. Uh, that was not God, but your guy. He just called him your guy because that's who we worship, a Jewish Messiah. Flip over to Luke chapter 2. Oh, let me, I'm sorry. Let's go back to Matthew just a second. Matthew chapter 1. There's another verse I was wanting to show you there. Um, well, let's read verse uh, 18, starting in Luke, Matthew uh, 1, verse 18. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife. For that which she has conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, Yahshua, for he will save his people from their sins. He's given reminding a Hebrew man by the name of Joseph, this is the definition, you shall call him Jesus. Because he's going to save, just like Joshua, he saved the people of Israel as they were coming into the promised land. Jesus is going to be saving his people. And uh, it's interesting there, and somebody was talking to me. I can't remember who this was. We were talking about it the other day. Um, did Mary and Joseph, well, let me ask it this way. Were Mary and Joseph married at the time that Jesus was born? Be careful. It's maybe a trick answer. There was a, there was a wedding period, wasn't there? I mean, literally, they would have been married. Okay. 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 
It didn't say anything about getting married after. Yeah. Okay. In this sense, that, you know, he took her. Before he took her, she was his betrothed wife or, wife, or engaged. So just to see if I can sort of put this in perspective here. If Mary became pregnant by the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to, I believe it was around Hanukkah. Um, uh, Hanukkah, and you should go to the C or K, so I, I know I'm okay there. But anyway, uh, Mary, if that is around this time of the Festival of Lights, it's called the Festival of Lights. It would have been sometime in December. She traveled, and actually the Bible tells us that uh, uh, their cousin, or Mary's cousin, Elizabeth, was six months pregnant. So at this time, Elizabeth is six months with child. Uh, six months. John the Baptist is inside, is in her womb, and uh, she is uh, uh, six months expecting. So she travels from December to um, January, February, March. So early March, she travels. It would have taken her to go from Nazareth, where Gabriel spoke to her first, where um, Zachariah and Elizabeth lived, was down near probably about three or four miles from Jerusalem in a little town, and so uh, she traveled down to visit with them and stayed with them these three months until John the Baptist was born. Then, it doesn't tell us what happens in between, but evidently she probably goes back to Nazareth. So she returned to her house. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Naz, N A R T H. Nazareth. Oh. Well, I'm racing everything now. Goes to Nazareth. So uh, she returned to her house. Uh, we don't know exactly what time frame this was, but now it's nine months later, and the baby's about to be born, so this is probably somewhere in the time frame of September. We'll just put a date now, or put that date, generally speaking. And she is with Joseph here, and Mary are together. There's a good chance because of what happens. There's three reasons that Joseph could have, uh, three choices that Joseph had. According to the biblical Old Testament, he could have actually had her stoned because she had been unfaithful during that period of time. The option that he was going to choose was he was going to put her away privately or give her a bill of divorcement or divorce her because she had been unfaithful. The third option was he could have married her. And so my guess is that they got married during that period of time that she had returned to Nazareth, but she has not known a man yet. She's still, uh, as far as a virgin, she is, has not been with men except for the Holy Spirit. Um, look at verse 22. Uh, so all this was done that it might be, I'm Matthew chapter 1. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. So here's another name of Jesus, Emmanuel. Sometimes it's spelled with an I, sometimes with an E, but either one. Uh, it's uh, and that comes from Isaiah 7, 14, I believe it is. But either one, it means God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused with, from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife, 
and did not know her until she brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. So there, they were married. So if you say, were Joseph and Mary married when Jesus was born? Yes. They would probably have not traveled to Jerusalem, excuse me, to Bethlehem. Because if she was not legally his wife, he would not have carried her to register for, in fact, from the scriptures we know that they were. she was with child from the Holy Spirit before they were married, but married during that period of time. But the Bible says he did, he did not know her until after Jesus was born. Anybody have a comment or question? Well, he had a problem. For pride, he wouldn't have left town with her if he wasn't married. That's right. Uh, yeah, it would not have been proper for him to have left town with her. Uh, just the two of them. And we don't know. They may have been traveling in, in an entourage, but at least the scriptures uh, lead us to believe that it was Mary and Joseph were the, the ones uh, sort of by themselves in this group. He would not have done that if they had not been married. So if you, somebody asked you, were they married when Jesus was born? It says here he took her to his wife. Uh, so therefore they were married. So that's something a lot of people don't really catch on. Now, why is that important? Well, a lot of people... Later on, they condemned Jesus, the Pharisees, the Jewish, because they said, you're illegitimate. And, of course, he came with some comebacks to that. He questioned them. But Jesus doesn't even have that as a, uh, a go-to because he's not illegitimate. He, his parents were married. Plus, she was of the Holy Spirit, uh, um, brought forth a child from the Holy Spirit. So there's no chance that she had done anything immoral or anything wrong at all during this whole time. And she married Joseph just as the plan had been. Uh, they got married, and he fulfilled his righteous vow of he could have stoned her. He didn't do that. could have put a bill of divorcement, but he married her. That was the third option. All right, anyone else? And because he was Jesus' legal father, uh, the Vidic, Succession passing through Joseph went to Jesus. He was physically his son, but he was legally his son. Without adoption, he's actually legally his son. Right. Yeah. Um, in fact, up until just recently, um, it didn't matter who the, who the father of the baby was that was always put on the birth certificate. The husband was always. And Joseph, therefore, is the legal, uh, rightful father of Jesus, but also he was not the biological, but he was the uh, legal and also the divinely appointed. Now here's something else that's interesting and that's what I went into, but uh, Mary and Joseph both were from the line of David. Uh, so even, and you know Jews today, uh, in the Old Testament, it didn't matter who the woman, who the mother was. In the Old Testament, if your father was Jewish, you were considered to be Jewish. Because there's a lot of these guys that were, uh, 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 they took wives from outside the, the line and married other people, had children, and those children were accepted into the family. But today, the Jews do it differently. The Orthodox Jews in Jerusalem and in, in Israel, they take it through the line of the mother. So Jesus meets both of those qualifications. He is uh, uh, biological or his, uh, his earthly father is the Zion, uh, Joseph he came through uh, the kingly line of Judah and also King David and also Mary comes through that same line. So no matter how they argue that, it's his, his genealogy fits. All right. yeah, there are uh, Jews who have been Jews all their lives but their mother is not Jewish and they because they say, well, we know who the mother is, but we don't always know who the father is. That's their, that's their modern day excuse of that. Um, there's a verse of scripture, and I want to look at one more here. Let's see if I can remember what it was. I forgot my mind's going crazy. This is a little off subject, but um, did you see the video of I think, well, I'm not sure. 
Uh, but I believe it was around that time. Around that time. Uh, there's, there's statements that give us, lead us to believe that he could have been born on the Feast of Trumpets. Okay. And then also the Feast of Booths or Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, it says there in um, uh, John chapter 1 verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That word dwelt is the word tabernacled uh, in, the, uh, in the Greek. So it means that he dwelt among his people, he tabernacled with him. That's only a suggestion. That's something we really can't uh, pinpoint. Um, I just wanted to share with you one other little thing here, if I could find this little thing. I'm going to bring it out here. I may not be able to find it quick enough. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Where is this? No, nope, that's not what I was looking for. Um, uh, just to briefly tell you, uh, one of the, the big rabbis in uh, uh, Israel up until uh, about 20 years ago was Rabbi Yishak uh, Kerdur. Uh, Yishak is the same word, uh, Isaac uh, Yishak. So, uh, this is, he, he lived to be 108 years old. Uh, if you used to ride around in the taxis uh, in Israel, they would have the Jewish uh, taxi drivers, they would have a picture of uh, Rabbi Yishak Kadur. Uh, he would be on their dashboard or hanging from their rear view mirror. He was so well respected. In 2005, he said that he wrote a secret note he says, I'm going to tell you who the real Messiah is. And uh, he said that God had spoken to him. And so he died shortly thereafter. But he required them to wait a year before they opened the piece of paper up. And, of course, it was in code. But when they deciphered the code, he claimed that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. So they, they really turned against him. And uh, almost hated him as much as they did. They won't talk about him in Israel anymore because uh, he claimed that Jesus was the Messiah. But if you look at all the prophecies, everything, he's the only person that fits uh, the true prophecy. And not only that, but he is our Savior. He came, Jesus, the name, blarts out us. He shall save us from our sins. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for... Not only that Jesus came into the world, but that his name fit exactly what his mission was. To save not only his people, but everyone. As the scriptures tell us in John, for all people, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him can have eternal life. That the Jews were supposed to be a light to the Gentiles. And that Jesus is a light not only to the Jews, but to the Gentiles as well, us. And we're so thankful for that. That you came into this world to be the light of the world. Thank you again for your word just revealing over and over just who Jesus is. In his name we do pray. Amen. Now if you'll all